Hello again everyone, Age of Dune here, and we are back with another League of Legends shoutcast. This particular game has somebody who I've been kind of curious to see. It's got this guy right here, GG Quas is his name. This is actually the new solo laner for Team Curse. Uh, a while back I had a video in which I introduced the new Team Curse, and you know, it had Poe Belter and Afrumu on it. That's, 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 that's gone. <laughs> About two hours after that video released, Pobelter and Aphromoo, well actually just first it was Pobelter, was announced that he was kicked from the team due to obligations with school and such. And then a few hours later or the next day or something, it was announced that Aphromoo was also kicked. So they had to find two more members and they did go ahead and find the, uh, choose GG Quas, and he's actually going to be their top laner. But you know the way they're doing it, of course, is the solo laner, and he'll be alternating between them. And of course, the other one is Curse Zakent. So we'll just see how that ends up going on. It sounds like it'll be pretty interesting. And I haven't really seen too much of Quas, so I decided to go ahead and cast a game with him in it. Because I've really been wanting to see what this new guy is like. And looking at his match history, he's done pretty well. And interestingly enough, he has his most played character in Ranked is actually Swain. And that, that is something that's really interesting to me. And it makes me think that he actually might be taking Swain top. So that's kind of cool. If not, I mean, we'll see. But I, I definitely think he's taking Swain top. And that'll be kind of cool. It looks like he does that quite a bit. So, he may actually be a very strong one. It's very strange to see a Swain going top, particularly on the red side, simply because he is so far away from blue, which he does need. But, I don't know, maybe... Maybe Quas has some secret that I don't know, although it does kind of look like he's hanging around mid. I think he's going to head up there fairly soon. We'll have to see. But yeah, his uh, second most played character in ranked anyway is actually Renekton. Okay, so it looks like he is actually going to go ahead and go mid and let Vayne go top. He is apparently a pretty big proponent of Vayne top, so I, I guess uh, he decided to go ahead and allow that to happen this time. Ask for it to happen this time, I don't even know. But he is going to go ahead and go mid. I did see some custom games where he played with the cursed team and he actually went Swain on them as well. I don't know whether he went mid or whether he went top, however. It might actually depend on which side you're on. Because like I said, when you're top and you're red side, you're going to be really far from that blue buff. When you're on the blue side though, you can actually go ahead and be Swain top lane and you'll be close to the blue buff. You'll be about equal distance from the blue buff as you are when you are mid. So he might actually go top as Swain under those circumstances. Ouch, that was a nice stun there from Annie. Thresh has actually got really low there and Quirky, uh, Quirky actually survived that. But in goes the Q there from the uh, Caitlyn and that actually got her a double kill there. Very nicely played by her and the Annie. Good stun there on the Thresh, who I believe is one of the members of... Uh, I don't remember which team. I, I think it's one of their Smurfs, though. One of the... I think the Chinese team, although I'm not sure. But I, I think it's one of their team members, given the I, I, and I, and the bar and everything else. I'm really not sure that it's really confusing. I'll have to take a look at it, but I, I think it is one of them. I'm just not sure which one or even if that's true. I thought I heard that one of them had retired and maybe he did so and then actually came to the US to play. I don't know. Otherwise, he's playing on a ridiculously large amount of ping. So, I really don't know. Lots of action happening up here. Both junglers are up top. And one of them is actually Mandin, who a lot of people do know as well as Dan Din. That's actually Andy Din's brother, Andy Din being Reginald on Team TSM. I believe Dan Din is actually somewhat the manager. I'm not sure if he is completely the manager, but I know he does assist Reginald on some things. Not sure what all it is. I know he cooks for them. Apparently he's a very good cook. They, they comment on it quite a bit. So I'm not sure, but 
I, I do believe he's at least somewhat their manager. Ooh, stuff happening down here. We're gonna take a look at the players shortly. Thresh looks like he went ahead and landed that hook. Went in, hi I'm Gosu going down pretty far, but she does have those two kills, so she's pretty strong as it is. Now in goes the Annie, Annie does have her stun, manages to land the stun there on the Thresh. And now Quirky's trying to come in again. There is the barrier bait from the Caitlyn there. Corky does manage to take her down, but now Annie is trying to take him down. Question is, which one will actually do it? He does flash out of that, because otherwise he would have died. And she ends up going down to the minions. Wow. Nice. He... I don't, I don't even think he meant to do that. I think he was just trying to get away, because one more auto attack from her would have had him. And the minions actually finished her off for him. So that is two kills for him. Mostly catching up the gap there from Caitlyn, although because of the fact that Caitlyn did get that kill, she's still a little bit ahead. She's already got a pickaxe, she's already got boots, and she's got her Doran's blade. So, alright, let's go ahead. Oh, nope, not yet. I was about to say, let's go ahead and line these people up. Yeah, let's go back a little bit. Looks like Warwick came around from behind. He's still only four, which means his ganks aren't amazing quite yet. But he is coming in here on that Wukong. Wukong actually went in on the vein there used his sneaky mode to try to get out and walked right into the Warwick. Warwick has red buff, so he's just slowing him down. And Vayne got one auto attack there. Is he going to die? I don't think so. And nice. He just barely escaped that. One more auto attack would have had him. And it looked like for a second that Warwick was going to go ahead and dive that, but he decided against it, which I can't say I blame him. Diving pretty much anybody is pretty darn dangerous. And Wukong has that sneaky mode and he actually may have ended up being able to get out of that one <laughs> thought that she was going to come for him all right let's go ahead and put everybody in order while there is very little action happening here we've got wukong top played by solo hero oh hold on Wu uh, lee sin coming in there goes the stun there from vane but vane is going to go down to the lee sin wukong did not get an assist for that because he was just trying to survive it but, you know, he didn't even survive it, so... He didn't get an assist for it. Lee Sin did get the kill. And... Does mean they're gonna not really lose too much CS on his team. But, it, it does, like I said, it, it means that he's gonna be behind by one kill. So... That's a little unfortunate there for him. Could be worse, could be better. You know, she could still be there farming. Nice stun there from Annie again. Alright, so he is against Heartbit playing Vayne, as we noticed there. Looks like Quas here is going in pretty hard. He does have six, and she does not, so she ends up going down there. He hit six just slightly before her, and then, of course, mid lane. I mean, that that's how mid lane goes. The first one to hit six a lot of time, if the other one does not immediately hit six as well, first one to hit six a lot of time ends up getting that kill. And that, that's the reason that a lot of times you see them rushing for that 6. They ignore so much else there because they want that first to 6 so they can just go ahead and burst the enemy down. I mean, Swain's not completely about the burst. He's more about sustain, but he does have a decent amount of burst if he manages to land his stun there, as well as that thing. I mean, just look at how much it did to Wukong there. He does have decent burst. He's just not quite as bursty as somebody like LeBlanc or... Oh, Zareth. Zareth's pretty bursty. Alright, so mid lane we've got Kale played by Det FM Gaukin. Interesting. Versus Swain played by GG Quas, who is, like I said, the curse Quas. The bottom lane we've got Caitlyn played by Hi I'm Gosu, which we've seen multiple times before, versus Quirky played by X Perfections. The Annie is supporting for the blue team. They're going in pretty hardcore here. Looks like the Caitlyn's actually going to die. In comes the Warwick as well. Annie's on the way out, but she is going to go down to the Corky. Corky actually jumped in there, and now Lee Sin's being forced to go back. He does go ahead and ward jump over that wall, so he is going to be fine. But that was a very nice engage, and now things have definitely turned in the favor of the red team here. Lee Sin's here. He's going to go in on that Thresh. Thresh box comes out, but it doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter because it did slow him down, so I have a feeling he's going to die for that. I don't think that was quite worth it, Chuck Normus. Oh, no, step on the trap. There we go. He does end up going down. Actually kicked, uh, I believe. Did he kick Warwick? Let me see that. It looked like he kicked Warwick and punted Corky up, but Corky's auto attack was already on the way. So let's see. He does have his kick up. Warwick went M, and yes, he did indeed end up kicking the Warwick up, but it really didn't matter as the Corky had the auto attack already on the way, 
and it ended up taking him down. So, Corky's played by X Perfections, like I mentioned. Annie is played by Atlanta. I'm pretty sure I've seen her on my channel before. Or him on my channel. Not sure. Oh, nice flash hold there. And that means that this Kale is a goner. They're going to go ahead and tower dive this. And she does indeed end up going down. Warwick gets the kill for that one. Nice tower dive there. And that was a great flash ult there. And she had no idea it was coming. He just came in there and just instantly destroyed her. Thresh, played by that... Yes, that. Not sure which one it is. The Lee Sin is played by Chuck Normus, and he is going to be against Mandin, as I mentioned before, who is playing Warwick. Oh, and he's going in, manages to land the stun there. There is the shield from Thresh, and it actually negated a lot of that damage from Caitlyn. Missed the pull there, though, but he is still using that flail. Slowed the Caitlyn down. Caitlyn actually took a lot of damage there. And she took a shot from the big one from Corky, which is great for him. He also has red buff, which really hurts as well as it does have that burn. He's still going at him, too. Still going, and it looks like Thresh is... Thresh has gotten to the point where he is powerful this game. He's not really too worried about it. Once you get a decent number of souls... Actually, he's only got 18. But once you get a decent number of souls, you're not nearly as squishy anymore. So you don't really have to worry about things quite as much. But that early game, at least for me, maybe I'm playing it wrong, but it is nasty now. I I end up playing it wrong, I think. They're going in on that vein. The Lee Sin came in as well, of course. The ult came out from the Wukong, and down goes the vein. Kill actually goes to the Lee Sin again. And mid lane... We just saw another death as well, and it looked like a K Swain killed Kale. Landed the stun on her, and there we go, just going in and waiting right in there. Gonna go ahead and tower dive this, and she does end up going down. So there we go, I guess he actually does have a little bit more burst than I thought. What does he, what does he have? He's got, it's a minion. He's got double Dorans and a Sapphire Crystal. <laughs> Okay, I thought that there was a little bit less burst there from Swain, but, uh, well, to be fair, a lot of times people don't get hit by my stuns when I played him. So that's, that's probably a big part of it, because those stuns actually do do quite a bit of damage. And, you know, I've only played him a couple times, so, honestly, I guess my, my judgment on it is somewhat suspect, shall we say. Alright. Oh, nice flash Tibbers there from the Annie. The Lantern comes out, and it does mean Annie's going to go down before they die, but Caitlyn is able to take down the Corky, and she's going to go ahead and take down the Thresh as well for the double kill using that ulti. So, a little bit there, it looked like it was almost going to happen, then nope. That ended up being a nope. Wow, that thing does do a lot of damage. Holy cow. How much does that thing do? Did that get buffed recently? Because I don't remember mine doing that much. 235 plus 86 magic damage over 4 seconds. And he takes more damage from auto attacks. But he wasn't even auto attacking. So I'm not sure. Maybe maybe I just played that wrong. Or or like I said, it's possible he got buffed. I don't remember it getting buffed. But it is definitely a possibility. I'm not really sure. Alright. SKT, by the way. That is the team name. I kind of forgot. I think that is one of the SKT members, although I'm really not sure. It's the whole line line I I thing just completely messes with you and it makes it really hard to tell for sure. And he was coming up for a gank and decided against it apparently. Swain got did end up being pushed back. Wukong was coming down for a gank as well. Ooh, Caitlyn just died there. Probably got nabbed by Thresh would be my guess. Going back right here, pretty safe. And I have a feeling she interrupted that. No! Thresh managed to catch her half a second beforehand. There's the flay, and that is the end of Caitlyn. Going back right there, not your best idea. I don't even think they had vision of her, did they? Let's actually go see that. Set it to red team vision. Oh, they did have vision. Actually, let's go a little bit further back just to make sure. Okay, so we do see her. I, th I guess she might have been picked up by this ward. Yes, she was picked up by that ward. So they actually did have vision of her. I didn't realize that... They'd actually had the vision from that ward. So that ended up getting her killed there. Very nicely played there. Got her with the got her with the grab, followed by the flay, and that was the end of Caitlyn. And now they're just waiting for their minions to get here so they can go in on the tower. And the tower's probably gonna end up dying. Annie's on her way down to stop the tower kill, but I don't think she's gonna be able to do it. That was a nice whiff. 
right between the middle of them. Leeson's on his way down as well. I think the tower's still gonna go down, but they may end up getting a kill out of it. I kind of doubt it. In goes the Annie, gets grabbed. Down goes the tower there. The stun comes out though, so it does give Lee Sin time to come in, but Warwick is coming as well. Thresh is getting pretty low. In comes the Warwick. Gonna go ahead and go in on the Annie there. Annie got really low flash from the Quirky means that she is gonna die. Lee Sin was able to escape this with no problem. He's actually actually he's not out of it quite yet. But they are looking like they're going to go in on Dragon here. So the question is, will he decide to stick around? Yes, indeed he does. And I don't think he'll be able to stop this, really. It looks like Warwick is actually going to go ahead and chase him while Thresh and Corky are going in on the dra their dragon. In comes the Caitlyn, taking some damage there from the Corky, and they together actually stop that dragon. Oh, out comes the ulti and blocked by the Corky. Nice block. Down goes the Lee Sin, however. Definitely going down. And now Swain was able to push back the Caitlyn. On the plus side for the blue team, they did stop that dragon. With just two people, they were able to stop the dragon. They didn't get any kills, and they did actually give up a kill. But like I said, they didn't stop they did stop the dragon. Kale is MIA and Swain is pinging like mad. Watch out, Vane, watch out. But she was not even there. She was just stealing rates. <laughs> but I don't really blame Vane for backing off, cause Kale ganks are pretty nasty with that Q. Especially with how overextended the vein was, things would have gone very poorly indeed had she been ganked. She, let's see, how farmed is she? She's at 102 farm versus 71 for Wukong. Not too surprising that she's ahead of him, given the fact that she is ranged, and he is definitely not. So let's see how, let's see how this tower is doing. It's uh, actually not doing too bad, as opposed to this tower, which is pretty much dead. Oh man, did he ulti that? All right, so she's going in there, just farming that up. Warwick came down, and he's just walking in. No, he just started going in on it with his Q. Did lots of damage. There's the ulti. Okay, so he's gotten her really low. There's her ulti as well. He's going to go ahead and turret dive this. He does end up taking her down. Out comes the Lee Sin, lands the Q from him, but he's forced to jump out because the Swain came in as well. So that was, uh, that was very nice by the Warwick. He actually did quite a bit of damage there. He did really fast. And that does mean that Swain's going to be able to push this with and force the Lee Sin to stick around or lose his tower. So that's not too shabby at all for the red team. They're probably pretty happy. Tried to land the stun there. Did not end up landing it, though. And down bottom lane, Corky and Thrash have pushed the Caitlyn and Annie off lane. Almost landed that. Had that landed, it would have interrupted her back yet again. And she might have ended up getting caught again. I don't know. Vayne's getting pushed back to her tower, interestingly enough. Well, I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. Wukong is actually pretty strong. He does have a lot of burst with that ulti. So I guess that's why. I'm not sure why exactly he decided to come out this way. Does he have a ward? He doesn't have a ward. I don't know if he was thinking about ganking Swain or what, but uh, he walked out a little ways and then turned back again. Oh, attempted to grab that again. Warwick is actually stealing red buff here. Is he going to get it, though? He did end up getting it, and that is going to force them to be just be kind of sad. Nice. You know, there goes your red buff. They did have a ward here. Actually, I don't know if they did at the beginning. Hold up. What is this? Stuff happening to Kale again. All right, so there we go. There is the red buff getting stolen there. And Swain hit her with that. Hit her with that thing as well. And uh, she didn't end up going down. She is taking a decent amount from his dot, but she did not end up dying. And now we've got a lot of action down here. Warwick's on his way over. Corky and Thresh are already here. Tried to grab there. The Lee Sin did not end up landing. And the tower finally went down mid because of Swain. Wukong's coming in for a gank, though. I don't know if it's really his best idea. Swain, this Swain has a lot of damage. Yeah, he did, he did actually end up backing off there, and he ended up taking a lot more damage. And now the entire team's going in on him. Down goes the Wukong, and Swain's not dead yet. He may actually end up living through this. There are no more stuns for that team, and he is just using his ulti to keep himself alive. Flashes out. He's still alive. Lee Sin misses his Q. Lee Sin is going to die, too. That was a three-person gank that resulted in two kills for Swain. That is insane. Wow. And in the meantime, I know I saw a kill down here as well. I believe. No, Vayne got Wukong. Wait, no. Wukong died here. What am I talking about? Oh, 
I saw the tower and thought it was a kill. Ha! Ah. He got really close though. That was that was pretty amazing. Very nicely played by him. Just barely kept himself alive, but hey, barely does it when <laughs> when you're trying to stay alive. As long as you're alive, you're still alive. Yeah. Wow. That sounded a whole lot better beforehand. Before I actually said it. Anyway, Vayne is gonna go ahead and push here. She's going in for the last tower for the red team. Outer tower, that is. And I don't know if she's gonna be able to get it quite yet, but she is waiting for her minions here. Ooh, there's a tower dive going in from the Kale. Swain used his ulti to get a little bit more health there from them. He's actually low on mana. So if she does end up going in on him, it's going to be pretty dangerous for him. As he, he'll be able to stun her. There we go. She flashes in. There's his ulti. And there's her ulti as well. I do think she, he's going to die here. He does indeed end up dying. Out comes Thresh though. And Thresh says hi. Manages to land the flay there. And the box. And down goes Kale. And that ends up giving a kill to the Thresh. And good luck with that name. Bar, bar, I, bar, bar, I. And you can't even tell here. Thanks, League of Legends font. And no, looks like Vayne did not end up getting that tower quite yet. Although it's really low, but she did not quite end up getting it yet. No wards on Dragon at the moment, although it is still up. I don't think we've seen it die yet. No, I don't, I don't think we have. We saw them attempt to kill it, and then they were forced back, and I don't think it's even been tried since then. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, so Corgi went down there and looked at it, but that was about the end of that. And now Vayne's coming back up here to go for her tower. Wukong actually did quite a bit of damage to it, so I think both top towers are right about equal at the moment. Let's see. 1165 versus 904. So they're, they're pretty close. Pretty close. But the Wukong did just head back, and Vayne is pushing pretty hard here. So we'll see if she ends up keep continuing... Does not look like it. She's going to allow this to... Oh, never mind. She's still coming. And yeah, she is going in on it now. Going to do a little bit more damage to it. And I have a feeling it's going to end up dying here. There's nobody around to dispute. And oh, Dragon. They are going in on Dragon here. There is the tower kill there. In comes the Lee Sin to try to smite. Does not end up managing it. Very nice ulti there from Warwick. And down goes the Lee Sin to Corky, actually. So very nice from them. Lee Sin thought for sure he was going to ult. Did he get stunned? He had to have been stunned. Now, what, what happened to him? Okay, so, let's see. He was sitting here. Does not have flash or anything. So, how did he get over there, even? Alright, so he's there. Let's go ahead and slow this down. Alright, so he ward jumps to that. And just... Was Dragon dead already? I don't think I... Oh, I can go slower. Hold on. Let's get a little closer, and then we'll slow it down a lot. A little bit further. There we go. Okay, so here he comes. The dragon is definitely still up, but it is not within range. He's got vision there, so he knows how low it is. And very shortly here, we'll see him go ahead and use that ward. Dragon's getting really low here. There's a ward there, and there's his ward jump. It is still up. He could have used smite right here, but instead he just kind of sat there. I, I don't know if he misclicked it or what, but either way, he did not end up using that, and that ended up getting pretty much nothing for him. I My guess is either it was slightly out of range, or he just completely fat-fingered it. I really don't know. But either way, all it did was get him killed for absolutely nothing. He didn't even get a use smite. And he wasn't stunned. That's the, that's the crazy part. I thought he was stunned or something the way he just stood there. But now, maybe he DC'd. I hope not. That would really suck to DC right after that. But it's a, it's a possibility. <laughs> Corky's checking for blue. Nope, not there. It's already gone to Kale. I actually just got it. Caitlyn's down here pushing. This tower is actually just about to go down. It is finally going to go down. That'll be the first tower kill of the game for the blue team. And there we go. They got their gold finally. And Thresh is kind of setting up here. Nice. Jumped in on the Kale. And there we go. She's going to die here. He threw out the lantern to the Swain and went ahead and just went in on her. Used that flay and took her down. And Vayne, in the meantime, was going in on the Wukong. Going in pretty hard. I'm, oh, she pinked it. That was great. I was For a second, there, I was like, why'd she pink it? And then I realized, hey, it's Wukong. That's, uh, you know, 
His Q, right? Q? No, no. His W. His W makes the decoy. But because she pinked that, she knew exactly where he went. So she just went ahead and continued following him. And another kill here. This is real. Well, that looks kind of cool. I like that. Yet another kill there for the red team on the Lee Sin. So we'll see what happened to him. He probably got ulted there. No, he got trapped by that. There's the ulti and down he goes. Now they're going in on the Annie. I think Annie's going to be fine here. She did manage to stun them. But Warwick is actually still chasing her here. I don't think he's going to be able to get her. <laughs> Timbers is kind of cool. Oh, nice smite there. Is he going to take that? Nope, not going to take it. <laughs> All right, so they're going to go ahead and get another tower kill. Blue lane is still pushing bottom, but honestly, it's not really helping them too much as the red team is still continuing to push here mid. And they may end up getting this tower. I'm not sure. Nice pull there from Thresh. There is the Kale ulti. Wukong went in and ultied everybody. Down goes the Swain to Caitlyn, actually. And Wukong does end up dying there to Thresh with that Ignite. Warwick made it out, so that so far was a one for one, unless Corky ends up going down here. He's not at the moment. What's that sound? I don't know what that sound is. What is that? For some reason, he still has the Valkyrie buff on him. Strange. Anyway, out goes the Cannonal and down goes the Corgi. So not too bad there. And the Warwick, in the meantime, got Kale. Interesting. He went in on her. She already, she doesn't have her ulti. Oh, he flashed out. But he came back in looking for a fight, ultied her, and she's going down fast. And yeah, he was just able to finish her off there. She stuck around a little bit too long. Was his ulti up right at the beginning there? Let's see. So she went in. Uh, he's ignited. That's why he fell back. He does have his ulti, but he waited until the ignite was gone so he would get the lifesteal. That was actually really smart on his part. I didn't notice that at first, but yeah, the fact that ignite was on him told him that it would be silly to go in right then because he would not get nearly as much lifesteal off of his items and stuff. So he flashed away, waited for that ignite to wear off, and then came right back in with that ulti, ulted her, used that lifesteal to get his life back, and was able to go ahead and survive that with no problem. Nice play by him. I Stuff like that, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't, I don't think I would even think about that when I'm playing. That right there is the sort of thing. that That is why I am silver, and he is not. He's actually either diamond or challenger. I'm not sure which. I do know that the Quaz here. Quaz is challenger. And apparently he was one of the fastest, if not the fastest, I'm not sure exactly, to get to challenger after having that account. I think it was like 150 games before he was in challenger, which is actually very impressive. Oh, Swain, they are coming after you and Bane. Watch out. Ward comes out. They do know he's there. The Annie is there. Nice. Wow. What the heck happened to her? How did she die that fast? Okay, what what does he even have? Okay, so he's he's got a decent amount there. Went in, did that. There's the stun, and the stun actually is what did it, I think. I mean that stun hit hard. And it just melted her there. Now Lee Sin's trying his best to get out. He is gonna get out probably, although oh no, she flashed. She flashed. Although he still might survive this, Caitlyn will not. Caitlyn ended up dying, and this does mean that these guys are probably going to be able to push. I believe... No, we didn't see any other kills. We did see Wukong take down a tower, though, who is actually still split pushing here. Corky just got Kale, and Kale was here. What happened to her? Alright, so she was... She was hanging around here. Probably not your best idea. In goes the Corky. We're doing a lot of damage to her quite quickly. There is her ulti. She's like, I'm gonna get out of this. Oh, no, you're not, Cookie says. There's that damage. And flashed, actually. But how does she end up dying here? Let's see, let's see. Corky's, Corky's still going. He's gonna go ahead and tower dive this. There is the shield from Thresh. And he took her down and immediately took that shield so he can go ahead and escape that. Lee Sin came in. But the flay from the Thrash said nope, and now Lee Sin is on the run thanks to that Warwick ult. But out comes the flay again, followed by the grab, and Lee Sin is going to go down. And he almost got hit by the stun again, which would have gotten her killed again. Wukong is still pushing top. He got another tower down, and he's continuing to push. 
but he is going to be losing this inhib for it. If he can take down the tower and the inhib, it'll be totally worth it, but I don't think that's gonna happen as at least one of them is respawning soon. No, they're all still alive. And they took down another tower here, and now they're gonna go ahead and go in on this inhibitor. Warwick managed to go back, so he is going to be able to push the Wukong back. Corky is back as well. That does mean that that's gonna be the end of this for these guys. Oh, Caitlyn. Oh, Caitlyn, not your best move there. Oh, doesn't matter, it's the end. That's why she decided to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the items, CS and such. We've got Vayne with 220 CS versus 137 for Wukong, 320 to 042. The Vayne has Blade of the Ruined King, Static Shiv, Zeal, Berserker's Grease, no enchant, Vision Ward, and a Doran's Blade versus Brutalizer, Ninja Tabby, Double Doran's Longsword, and a Health Potion. Swain's at 180 CS versus 111 for Kale, 825 to 181. The Zonya's Hourglass, Rod of Ages, Sorcerer's Shoes, and a Double Doran's Ring versus Nasher's Tooth, Sorcerer's Shoes, Ruby Crystal, and a Crystalline Flask. He's definitely way ahead of her there. Corky is at 141 CS to 166 for Caitlyn, 932 to 740. He's got a Trinity Force, Bloodthirster, Sorcerer's Shoes, the Home Gun Enchant, and a Doran's Blade versus Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Berserker's Greaves, no enchant, double Dorans, and a health pot. Thresh is at 12 CS versus 10 for Annie. 3, 4, 13 to 0, 5, 6. That is a Ruby Sidestone, Boots of Mobility, Kindle Gem, Philosopher's Stone, and an Oracle's Elixir versus Ruby Sidestone, Boots of Mobility, and a Cages. She actually did not build Philosopher's Stone, which is kind of strange. I guess she didn't have the gold or something. I don't know. Anyway. Warwick is at 63 CS to 74 Lee Sin. He is 506 to 371. Definitely ahead there for Warwick. He's got Wits and Spear of the Ancient Golem, Kindle Jam, Chain Vest, Boots of Speed versus Spear of the Ancient Golem, Iron and Boots of the Home Guard Enchant, and a Double Longsword. So that's going to be the end of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely did enjoy seeing the new Quas. Oh, not really new Quas. I mean, he's still Quas. But either way, seeing Quas, the new member of Curse, and I hope you guys did too. Have a good night. Bye.